So these artists begin to create new styles of art, new ways of looking at the world. And as I said earlier, it's mostly focused on reality. What is real? What is not real? How do we, how do we tell the difference? And how do you draw that? So, so you, you know the deal, right? There's a point, say it's, it's like here, and you want all your lines to intersect, right? So if you look at any piece of Renaissance art, great Renaissance art will always have a point right in the middle. If you check out the Last Supper, right behind Jesus' head, pretend there's a little point. Pretty much any, any picture from the time period, all the lines are going to intersect at a point. And that's perspective, and it's one way to make things look real. I don't understand it. Clearly, I'm not an artist, but that's what they tell me in the books. Okay? You should know about Michelangelo, but really he does more in Rome. So we're not going to talk a lot about him. He and Leonardo had a little like a rivalry. They didn't like each other because the Medici were paying them both, and so they were fighting for the same money. But I like to think they respected each other. We'll talk more about Michelangelo next time. Raphael, same story. He does his good work in Rome. And Donatello, I like him. He does some nice stuff, but most of the history books don't ask much about him. The test doesn't ask much about him, so I'm going to skip over him if that's all right with you. I told you that the Medici funded some writers, and oh, baby, did they. Let's take a look. We got a guy named Machiavelli. Now, Machiavelli wrote a book out of frustration. He thought that Florence ought to be part of a greater Italy, an Italy that dominated and took over Europe. Unfortunately, the Italian city-states were constantly fighting each other, and they couldn't agree on who would rule, and so they never dominated Europe. Perhaps you noticed that. The Prince, the book called The Prince, was Machiavelli's attempt to unite the princes of Italy under one rule. It didn't work for Italy, but it was a great blueprint for the nationalization of a lot of other places when they became a single state. Attaboy, Machiavelli. Another man, Castiglione, great name, say that with me. Castiglione. Castiglione wrote a book about how to be a decent human being, how to dress nice, look good, use proper manners, which side the fork goes on, it's on the right. Uh, whether it's inside or outside of the knife, he clarifies all these things. He says that people should use good words. Don't use naughty words. Don't use words that might embarrass someone. He's a good guy. He invents the gentleman. That's cool. I hope they wrote it on his gravestone. He invents the gentleman. My favorite guy, though, because I'm a historian, is Lorenzo de Valla. Lorenzo de Valla was doing some reading. He was the Pope's secretary, and he was looking back over some documents. and discovered this document called the Donation of Constantine from like a long time ago and apparently Constantine gave all the Roman Empire to the Pope. <laughs> now you're saying to yourself, why would he do that? I don't know. But it was written down, everybody accepted it, everybody believed it. Except Lorenzo. Lorenzo doesn't accept what people tell him, he checks it out for himself. And he discovered that they used some words like feudalism that weren't around in the year 300 when Constantine was around. Eh, it's a forgery, said Lorenzo de Valla. And you would think the Pope would like, nope. The Pope said, good work, Lorenzo. Well, let's not tell everybody, though, okay? I like my power, but I respect you for being a free-thinking man. boy, And he got to keep his job. Sometimes Popes do good things. Got to admire it. People were informed about all this by the printing press. Thanks to a German guy about 1450 named Johann Gutenberg. Now the thinking ones among you are saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. The printing press was invented in China like a long time ago. I know, I teach that one too. But we're in European history. As far as European history goes, Johann Gutenberg invented it. Go with it, okay? With this printing press, they can spread their new knowledge all over Europe for a fairly inexpensive price. Atta boy, Florence. Unfortunately, the good times are about to come to an end. In 1494, a priest showed up, and he had good intentions, and I have to imagine he was a good guy. His name was Savonarola. Savonarola looked at what was going on, and he saw a lot of paintings of naked people. Priests don't like that. He saw a lot of books about naughty things. I haven't told you the names of them because I don't want to mess you up at all, but they're out there. He saw badness, and he said, Stop! No more! People, of course, ignored him. So he gave some really good sermons. And he convinced the people they were being bad, bad, bad. And he invited all of them to bring their naughty things, their naughty paintings, their naughty books, to the central square of Florence where he would burn them in an enormous bonfire of the vanities. 
And they did, and they burned them, and they, oh, sad. They burned these glorious works of art. Can art, like, mess people up? Can the media, like, get in your face and screw you up? I think you probably can. Savannah Rilla probably had a point, but my guess is he went too far. You shouldn't burn things. <sighs> Florence figured out about a year and a half, two years later, that they had done the wrong thing, and they burned Savannah Rolla. And that was the end of the Renaissance in Florence. The people ran away. The great thinkers all ran away. And where did they run to, you suppose? They ran to that other great city in Italy, Rome. Next time, the Renaissance in Rome. Hopefully I'll see you again soon. Adios. Yeah.